Refractive surgery, remember, is surgery to correct glasses. So here, what we're basically trying to do is to convert ametropia into emetropia. So that is myopics, hypometropics, and astigmats who don't want to wear glasses. We are trying to cause them to raise to focus on the raise to focus on the retina. But how do you do that? So let's, let's look at that. The basic aim of refractive surgery is to convert into emetropia, isn't it? And how we do that? So we have these particular member. Suppose you are a myopic here. So what exactly is myopia? Rays of light focus in front of the retina, is it not? So I want to make him free of glasses, but I have to focus the rays on the retina. But I cannot make the eye smaller. Remember, most common cause of axial myopia. So I cannot make the eye smaller. So what we do? We make the cornea less powerful by making it flat. You know that curved surfaces bend more, and flattening that surface will allow light to bend less. So if we make this flat, how do you make this flat? By removing this corneal tissue. So remove the some tissue from the center, we make the cornea flat. As the cornea flattens, the rays of light are not able to bend so well and they go and bend back which is right on the retina. So this is how I correct myopia by flattening the cornea by removing the tissue from the center. Okay, This is for myopia. What about hypermetropia? Hypermetropia is exactly opposite. And here, what we are trying to do is exactly opposite, but it's not that easy. Why not? Because remember, in hypermetropia, the rays of light are focusing behind the retina. Again, I cannot elongate the eyeball here. So what we do, we need to focus the rays on the retina. How do you do that? By making the cornea steep. Remember, if I make the cornea steep like that, it will bend rays of light more. If the rays of light bend more, they will focus on the retina, isn't it? So, the basic principle of refractive surgery is to change the curvature of the cornea regardless of the refractive error. In myopics, we make it flat. In hypendrochs, we make it steep. In astigmats, we do both. It's not easy, but it can be done. But how on earth do we make the cornea steep? Remember, we make it flat by removing tissue. But to make it steep, we have to add tissue. No, no, that's not going to work. You cannot add corneal tissue on this. So, to make this steep, what we do, since we cannot make this steep, what we do, we remove tissue from the periphery. Remember, as you move tissue from the periphery, it makes the periphery flat and as it becomes flat, so the center becomes more curved in comparison to the periphery. So, by flattening the periphery, that is by removing the tissue from the periphery, we make the steep central cornea steeper and it would force the rays back and form the hypermetropia to focus on the retina. So, remember, the trick is to steepen the cornea by removing the tissue in hypermetropia from the peripheral cornea. Whereas in myopia, you remove it from the center. So these are, this is the basic principle of refractive surgery. We have to basically change the curvature of the cornea. Let's see how we do it. So we divide them into two kinds of surgery. One is incisional, which means where you incise, take an incision with the blade, diamond blade, laser, whatever. There are two of them, radial keratotomy and astigmatic keratotomy. Okay, radial keratotomy is one of the, the oldest refractive surgery that we know of and astigmatic keratotomy is to remove astigmatism. Both of them use diamond blades to correct them with the incision. But the other types of was under laser refractive surgery and we have multiple of them. We have a PRK which is photorefractive keratectomy, laser assisted in situ keratomy, LASIK. This is the gold standard. Most of the, the patients want the LASIK and now the latest is called a SMILE. The SMILE, SMILE when you see the camera, SMILE and it stands for small incision lenticule extraction. This is the smile surgery that we need to know, refractive surgery. And the latest one, if the smile and the laser could not help you, then we go for implant a fakic IL, which is an IL intraocular lens, but without removing this normal crystalline lens because it's not a cataract. So these are the few things I will tackle in a short while. So we have some idea of refractive surgery. Let's go with the radial keratotomy first. The oldest refractive surgery, radial keratotomy, was practiced first in Russia. And it is the first of the refractive surgery where we make radial incisions almost 90% depth. That is deep in the stroma at radial areas across the cornea, which with the guarded diamond knives, you do not penetrate right into the anterior chamber. And this flattens the central and peripheral and the, peripheral and the central cornea. Parasitical cornea, big part, center has to be saved. So it flattens the paracentral and the peripheral cornea. And as it flattens, remember, we need to, that is what we did in myopia. We need to flatten it so that the rays of light focus behind, is it not? It was already focusing in front and it flattens central cornea, which corrects myopia. So this is for basically for correcting myopia up around to less than minus five diopters. 
less than minus 5 is the outer limit actually more than minus 3 is not a good idea. And this is how we perform like so we have radial cuts approximately 8 cuts of 90% depth sparing the pupil in the paracentral and the peripheral cornea. This is not a very good idea remember there are too many side effects of RK and we are still paying the price for aggressive RKs done in the 80s and 90s. So this surgery has been mentioned Jeremy just to discourage you from ever thinking of this one because there are too many side effects of RK. Very well. The next is PRK, photo refractive keratectomy. See the difference, photo is light hair and that means we have a laser hair. This is not incisional, we have a laser and keratectomy means removal of the tissue. So PRK is using a laser and here we come to another laser, the eczema laser. The eczema is used argon fluoride gas with a Mac with a wavelength of 193 nanometers. You don't have to memorize this. Remember, the two wavelengths that memorized during lasers are NDAG and double frequency NDAG with 1064 and 532 nanometers. Other wavelengths we don't have to memorize. But just for information's sake, argon fluoride is a gas used in the eczema laser, which is only used for refractive surgeries. And as expected, it flattens the central cornea, correcting myopia and flattens and steepens the central cornea by in hypermetrop by removal of tissue from the periphery. So, so, this is central removal of tissue that is peripheral removal of tissue as I explained. So, this is what it does by using a laser beam the exam. See, the patient is lying here in front of you and the exam works on this. So, it comes here on the central cornea and removes the central area. You can see it removes the central area, it flattens the tissue in the center so the myopia gets corrected. So, this is a very precise form of surgery because it is there, this is here no you know guarded blade knife where you can penetrate deeper this is a very precise laser control surgery results can be very good but it is not very popular with the patients because it has two problems one it causes pain because you know as it enters the scorn surface where the nerves are it is always painful for the patient for a few days and second there's slight danger if you damage the bowman's membrane remember if it penetrates deeper it would damage the bowman's and the bowman's membrane cause irreversible scarring so these are the two important points that we have. It, otherwise, it is a very good safe procedure, corrects up to 8 to 10 diapters myopia, hyperopia of approximately 3 to 4 diapters, astigmas around 3 to 4. You don't have to memorize these things, they are just being mentioned as a, to complete the entire process. And what are the indications? When would you do refractive PRK? Remember, PRK is not the first choice, LASIK is the first choice, but PRK are done in people who have thinner corneas, okay? They have dry eyes, they have thinner corneas, unsuitable for LASIK and for dry eyes member and PRK, LASIK dryness is too much, hair is much less and people who are highly active lifestyle, people who are sportsmen, you know, people who are playing games and running, then there we prefer to do a PRK because a highly active lifestyle may encourage flap dislocation in uh, LASIK. So people who are sportsmen or into gym a lot, you know, we prefer to do a PRK. So this flap dislocation is less likely, here, flap dislocation. So these are some indications as we'll go over, but LASIK is the gold standard which people aim for, most people because of its wow factor listed with LASIK. LASIK stands for Laser Assisted In Situ Keratomyelosis. Laser Assisted In Situ Keratomyelosis. The keratomyelosis is a Greek word which means changing the shape of the cornea. Change the shape of the cornea, this is keratomyelosis and again use the eczema laser, the same thing but the procedure is different here, is not? What we do here? It is the most commonly a surgery for refractive correction. Please remember, this is the simply the gold standard for all refractive surgery procedures. An average flap of 120 microns. See what this means basically, what we do. Remember, this time this is a slightly different procedure. The patient is again lying in front of you with the cornea dome like this. But this time, it doesn't, it's not just the examiner coming and removing tissue from the surface. What is done is there's a keratome here, is a blade which comes across and makes a flap. It cuts across the cornea. Remember, it cuts into the anterior stoma. It does not touch the bones, it will cause a corneal scarring. So it cuts below the bones movements into the anterior stoma and creates a flap like this. The flap rises, okay? It rises and the flap is attached here, is hinged at the superior cornea here, superior part. It is not a free flap that completely detaches. It's attached superiorly. And you reflect this flap like this. Now, as you reflect the flap, remember, we have exposed the corneal stroma. Now, the eczema laser falls on the stroma, flattens the corneal stroma by making the collagen flat, and then we put the flap back on. So, it basically has three steps. First, you make the flap reflected. Second, you do the eczema. 
and this ablates the stroma, makes it flatter. And then you replace the flap back on the third procedure. You just replace it. You don't have to stitch it automatically, it seals. So these are the three steps involved in LASIK. It's very simple and the patient gets up and he has perfect vision. So here the average flap is a good flap with about 120 microns, okay. Less than that will cause too thin a flap. And the residual stromal thickness has to be 250 microns. These are basic facts. Mm -hmm.